How's it going everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. Welcome to Learning Yep. This is a special request tips and tricks video for Toronto Gaming, Corey Davis. And we're going to be looking at a special situation in where you can create, um, you can have large party members and you can create summoning units like turrets in this example that uh, behave in, in specific ways. I'm going to try to go through this as fast as possible. I'm going to show you first what I'm going to create in this tutorial and stick around if you want to learn how to create that. So I've created several skills for this demonstration. Uh, I'm going to use the same one on five of the party members that we have. So I'm going to summon five turrets. I'm using some Yanfly plugins. I'll go over those after the, the presentation. Uh, one of those plugins that I'm using is Sound Cyphers. It lets me press the shift button and everything runs faster. So the whole process is you can speed up your battles and whatnot. Of course, we're fighting Thanos. I've removed the HP bars from the the um, turrets themselves, the summon, but you can put them back if you want. Um, I made a move to repair the turrets. They actually do take damage, which you can see. Um, like say I went to heal, you can see that the turrets two and three have taken damage. Um, I'm just going to have the party member attack and show off the turrets. So they are controlled by an AI and they will do two, um, one of two attacks, automatic blaster or over blast. And automatic blaster, I'm using Yanfly's weapon replace to make their basic attacks become a different skill. So I made a custom skill and replaced their basic attack with that. But then I used weapon unleash so that I can specifically just, uh, say 20% of the time I want them to do um, a different attack, an overblast or something like that. Okay, my mouse is causing a problem here. That's why the up and down wasn't working. That's a targeting core plugin for me, uh, Yenfly. I'm going to throw in some extra skills, uh, but I'm going to be mainly talking about the turrets in this video. I kind of want to just show you that states appear on them and any state animations will apply. They're actual uh, actors, so you create actors. So I'm giving a lot of commands, right? I'm giving five commands for party members, one, two, three, four, five, but then 10 of my actors are, are battling for me. And uh, I think it's a, a really cool concept to add automatic party members to like your army if you're making a more uh, strategy-based game but want to use a side view battle system. Uh, it's a it's a cool approach to things, and this is a rather hard fight to um, beat with just the turrets. But you can see all the turrets disappeared, um, as was right on time. Um, they disappear after three turns, and they and then you, it's a five turn cooldown. Of course, all of these numbers are just like uh, temporary placeholder, and they can be manipulated because this is a template for you to use. So you are allowed to use this sort of. Um, idea in your game, just change it up for to fit for your custom scenario. So if, if you want to create something like that, let's just go over how you would do that. Um, we're going to need a few plugins, the core engine, the battle engine core, action sequence packs helps but not necessarily re required for this. I was using uh, HP gauges which I personally like but you don't have to use them. Requirement for this will probably be buff states core um, for the states, yeah. So you're going to need buff states core, uh, visual state effects is just makes it so that you can see the states better. I like this plugin for this type of thing, but you don't necessarily need it. Um, what else would you actually need? Do you even need all this other stuff? I don't think so. I did show off examples of Weapon Unleash plugin. So auto passive states, Weapon Unleash, because I think one of the states is going to need this plugin as well. Uh, it's a few things. Uh, finally, there's two more that you'll need and one optional. Party system and the row formation, you're going to need those two Yanfly plugins. Put those in. Uh, some manipulation of parameters will be required based on your game. For example, in the party system, you want to adjust the max battle members from the default four to however many people you want. If you want to have like three people in the back row and then three summonable units, you would do six. In this case, we have five party members, a front and back row for the party, and then a front front row for your summons, which are in front of the party, and you can have up to five of them acting as summons, and so you have ten max uh, party members. Um, the rest of it, you can change it to whatever you like it to be. Row formation, we use this. Uh, by when we, We're going to need to change the, the maximum rows, so I've changed it to three. 
Um, this allows you to position your actors in a way that makes it so that the, all of them are drawn on the screen because a big um, problem with this setup is drawing the actors in, uh, off of the screen. Like I've set this up in many ways and a, a very common pitfall for this failing to, to pass like an overall is it usable is um, what happens is it draws it, up, it draws the character animations off the screen. So um, using row formations is a simple way to change where the actors are drawn without getting too complicated. So I, I went with the row formations for simplicity because we changed the parameter on party to the max numbers we want to increase. We change the parameters on row formations to up our maximum rows, and then we scroll down. We're gonna take one of these uh, note tags. We're gonna use default row, and then we copy this. All right, and then that's it for all of these. The optional one uh, was, was target core, and another optional is the sound ciphers battle speed up script. I recommend that one as well. The rest, you know, you know, you don't really need all of the stuff that I put in this project, but really good to have. So you can see in the actor's note tag, we have the comment, the comment event that I just copied, the default row, um, already put in. So for your casters and healers, you put them on the far back row, which will be three. In my case, if you have three rows, the first row will be towards the center. So the higher the number, the farther to the right on the X axis, right? Uh, so I'm putting the casters and like the part, the big, bigger characters on the ba on uh, back row on back on row three. Hello, hello words. Uh, I'm putting like the front row fighters in the second row, which is the middle row. But it's like the front row if you don't have any summons. And then I'm putting all the summons on the first row. And I, how I've done the summons in this case is I've created a new actor for every instance of summon that I want out in the battle and put them at the very front so that they draw uh, in the right area. Then I've created one class for all of them to work under. So I make one class and then they're all actors of that class. Inside this I did a few note tags to um, change some things. Now I said we use the Adfly's Weapon Unleash plugin, so we're doing two commands from that plugin. Replace attack with Automatic Blaster because that's the name of the skill that I created which we'll look at next. And then 20% of the time of it's do, using its normal attack, it's going to use Overblast. Now, I've given it uh, Automatic Blaster a, as a skill, but it actually does not even need it as a skill. Because we've replaced its basic attack with the skill, it doesn't even need access to specials or magic. So I want to test that real quick, but I believe that it doesn't even need access to any skills or any uh, traits when you force them through... Um, Weapon Unleash plugin. And then I've, what I've done is I've, I've hid the HP gauge because of the way that I set it up. Putting the HP gauge on your turrets, um, not only does it take up more, more real estate, which I was fine with, but it caused a bug where it would stick around. The HP gauge, that is, would just stay there after the turrets disappear, after the timer wears off. Um, so anyway, I'm hiding HP gauge to fix that bug. You can, But not everybody will encounter that bug. If they don't have HP bars, they won't even need that. But moving on to the skills. The two skills for the turrets are Automatic Blaster. It's the basic attack. It's applying a TP gain. Since it's using attack replace, you don't want it to cost anything. In fact, you want it to probably give TP because it's like the new basic attack. You can make it certain hit or physical attack. It's supposed to be a physical attack. I guess it was stronger than it needed to be. You don't need to give it a description because we're controlling that uh, class of units with auto battle. So you can see the turret class has a special flag on other and that is auto battle. That's what causes it to, um, where you don't have to input commands for the turret every time. So 20% of the time it's going to use overblast, which is the next, uh, which is a bit stronger. So if we look at it, the damage formula is a bit higher and uh, should also be physical attack, not um, certain hit. But like that's a, that's a flavor that you'll change up. The skill type doesn't matter. You know, since it's auto uh, controlled, you won't need a description, like I just said. Uh, I made another skill called Repair Turrets. We'll look at that as well as part of this tutorial series uh, or tutorial episode. Uh, of course, all of these have been given custom animations, which is a big part of making your own skills. Um, if you don't do it, it shows in the end. Uh, but if you're doing it to just prototype something, you don't need it. But then when you finally figure it out, you should probably uh, polish it a little bit. So I make custom animations for that. Uh, let's see what common event plays. We'll look at this common event moving on now. We also need to look at the common event for summoning the turret. So I've used a plugin, another um, one. If you want to use cooldowns, I didn't mention it as something you needed, 
but if you want you, um, skills to have a cooldown, you need to put in skill core and the extension skill cooldowns. Otherwise, it won't. Um, this note tag won't do anything. But if you have those two plugins in and you put this cooldown number, you can only cast this spell once every five turns as well as this spell once every five turns. And that's um, relevant because the state, um, I've created um, five states. So the states wear off in four turns. Actually, it feels like three turns because one wears off immediately at the end of casting it. So the player casts the thing, summons the turrets, the states are on four, the player's turn is over, that goes to three. Because the states tick with the player's turn. So the turrets will also disappear upon player's next turn, four turns later or three turns later. So if you want it to last for three turns, you give it a duration of four. If you want it to last five turns, you give it a duration of six. Um, so each of these states is different and the code inside of them will be different. Uh, it, depending on what actor you're using. So um, I'm using um, the Unflies Buffs States Core in order to put in some JavaScript and that will run at a specific time. Buff States Core from Yenfly, fantastic pl plug, and I love it. So I'm using Custom Remove Effect, and that means when this state is on a, a target, when it is removed, it will run this code a single time. Uh, so we're saying remove actor six. Uh, when this state is removed, which is automatically in battle removed. Um, it's removed at the end of battle if it does, hasn't expired yet. That way that when the party goes to their status menu and they press escape and they look at their menu, they don't see all the turrets. The turrets only show up when you summon them in battle. At the end of battle, they're gone. And that's kind of how um, the idea of this was supposed to work. And so each of the summons that you have, you'll make a state for. So summon first, second, third, fourth. They don't actually have to have different names, um, but I give them different names just to help clarify when I look at the common events. But they all remove an actor, and they remove a different one. So in this instance, 6 through 10. So if I look at actors 6 through 10, it's actors 6 through 10, which is the five turrets. Okay, so that's that. that uh, those are the states that are applied. Um, when do we apply the states? Well, that's actually held in the common event. So let's look at the common event. So add turret. This is the first common event uh, for this. Uh, you use the skill, and the skill calls this, this common event. The skill we're talking about is summon turret. We use summon turret. It calls a common event. In this common event, it's just a series of checking to see who's in the party and adding a party member and adding a state on that party member. So when you call it, it's checking. I'll kind of go verbatim through this. If turret 5 is in the party, so that is actor number 10. And if turret 5 is in the party, that would make the game believe that all the turrets have been added. So in that case, nothing's going to happen. So if you summon 5 turrets and you keep using the spell, nothing's going to happen. Otherwise, if turret 4 is in the party, we need to add the last one. So we're going to add turret 5, and we're going to add a state on turret 5, the summon 5th. Um, state. Otherwise, we're going to add, we're going to check to see if three is in the party, and if three is in the party, uh, then we're going to add the fourth one and put a state on the fourth. Then we're going to see if two, one, etc. Otherwise, what we're going to do is just, we know that nothing's in the party because turret one isn't in the party, and the way we designed it, if turret one is in the party, two, three, four, or five can't be in the party, um, unless something else removes them from the party, which nothing else is. Uh, so the default is add the turret one, which is the first summon, and put a state on him, his own custom state that references turret one in the state. So this would be actor six. And that's what happens. So common events, change party, change state, that's it. That's the summon skill. Um, the next thing is um, we automatically handled the removal of the turrets in battle. So at the end of battle, all of your states should wear off, all of the summon states. But if they don't, you might somehow bug or glitch the game into a state that allows the player to have all of their uh, turrets outside of combat. That could cause a lot of problems in different ways, so we, I made a contingency set up to fix that. So this is a common event that says no turret out of battle, and what it does is it just checks to see if a turret is in the party. So it checks all five of them in their own conditional statement. Is the first turret in the party? If so, remove it. Is the second one in the party? If so, remove it. And this is a parallel that's going to run once a switch has been turned on. And a switch that switch can turn on in your initialization phase. So this is a parallel process that's going to run right here. Um, and it's the same thing. 
So I could have this parallel process run as an event, as you see here, or you can have it run as a common event that runs whenever you feel like hitting that switch. So I put it in two ways. I'm only calling it through this event, actually. But it could run both ways. All that's really doing is making sure that if there are turrets in your party, um, they're no longer in your party, like so that you only have five outside, or however many you decide that you should have. Um, and then finally, you have the last one, the repair turrets. All you're doing here is changing the state of all of the turrets. Um, you're checking. You're doing a change state, and you're saying uh, remove knockout. So you don't even have to check if they're knocked out. Just say remove knockout, and that's good enough. You, you can say see if they're under the state of knockout, and if so, remove it. But it's unnecessary, and it's just about the same amount of processing power if you just say remove knockout from all of the turrets and then change their HP by uh, the maximum amount that they can have and just add. And now you're not changing max HP, you're just changing HP. So it's a healing them. It's bringing them back to life and healing them all. And I believe that is it. We've done the skills. Um, did we do any items? No, no weapons, no armors. Uh, we made Thanos, but that doesn't really matter. That's just for flavor. And the Thanos battle, of course, I'm working on a way to uh, make battle backgrounds just alternate really smoothly uh, during test battles. Uh, I'll figure that out later. But yeah, that's a tips and tricks video. It took 16 minutes, holy crap. Um, hopefully you guys like it. There's a lot of uh, things to absorb from this video. And thank you so much to all the patrons on Patreon.com for supporting this type of content and helping everybody uh, learn through example and uh, if you guys have any questions just leave them in the comments below or you can message me on discord links in the description below if you'd like us to play your game on stream that's a reward for the 20 dollars tier on our patreon tips and tricks 30 dollars tier of our patreon big shout out to toronto gaming for sponsoring this 30 dollar uh patreon tier uh for a tips and tricks video and uh thank you guys for watching we'll see you guys next time have a fantastic one Bye bye